So what is game theory? Well, game theory is all about making decisions. Basically about working out what is in the best action in the game by paying attention to what's in the best interests of your opponent in the game. And basing your strategy on predicting what they're most likely to do to achieve those best interests. The logic used in game theory can then be applied to real world events from business decisions to economic policy, biology and computer science. And game theory entered into popular culture through the work of John Nash, portrayed in the film A Beautiful Mind. But like many things in science, many people have worked on it over the years, rather than it being the creation of just a single individual. And game theory is a useful tool, but it does run into problems when dealing with humans, since it assumes that a human decision will always be to act in whatever's in their best interest. However, this isn't always the case, as sometimes humans make irrational decisions. So how does this work? Well, say you have two companies that produce similar products at similar prices, and the two companies dominate the market and split the sales about 50-50. Without cutting prices or, say, developing a new product, the only real way they have of increasing sales is to spend money on an advertising campaign. Whilst this may seem theoretical, it has happened many times before on products from lawnmowers to soap powders, and the companies involved have often spent vast amounts of money on advertising campaigns. But what happens if we look at the process in a fairly simplified view of game theory? Well, if two companies, A and B, both make five million in normal year profits without advertising, what will happen if they advertise? Say company A spends two million on advertising and company B spends nothing on advertising. Company A will make an extra three million in profits from increased sales and company B will lose three million in profits. With the result in the end of one year, company A will now make six million, not eight because they had to spend two million on the advertising and company B makes two million. Reversing the situation gets the same result just for the different companies. Next we'll have a look at what happens if both companies advertise. They both spend two million on advertising because neither side now has an advantage. Both now make three million a year. The five million original profit minus two million advertising spend. Now what happens if neither company spends money on advertising? In this case both get to keep the five million in profit. Using game theory you can see that whilst running a big advertising campaign may give you a short benefit to sales, the other company is going to have to respond to recover the lost ground. Both companies spending massive amounts of, on advertising likely to dent profits, they probably have to increase the price of the item in order to recover lost profits, at which point the profit margin on the goods becomes greater, making it easier for a third player to enter the market and make money and take market share. So the ideal situation, as far as the company's balance sheets are concerned, is not to advertise, keep the maximum amount of profits and make it difficult for new players to enter. This of course is a simplified example. Game theory gets much more complicated with more players in the game, more issues or factors changing the situation. The principles say the same for game theory.